So should you use a static site generator for your next application, or should you use something like WordPress? Let's figure it out. Typically, I've always been a humongous fan of WordPress, and in fact, I still am. But I always get the question of, should you use WordPress or something like a static site generator? Now, what are some of the most popular static site generators out there, just so we understand what they are? The biggest ones that I have listed here are going to be something like Hugo, Gatsby, Jekyll, and perhaps Next.js, but Next is more tailored towards React, and I think Gatsby as well, but they can also serve as static site generators. So those are the most popular ones, and then we have WordPress. So what are the two differences here? So let's talk about that first. WordPress is a content management system that is installed on your server, and then you can add posts and categories and all different types of things all through a administrative panel. You don't have to write any code. You can install various different themes. Now, if you would like to run code, you can do so, but it's not a very straightforward process. It allows you to get up and running quickly. And in fact, it's something that's very useful for WordPress. A ton of the World Wide Web still currently runs on WordPress and is a very popular choice. So it's something I still use a lot of the times for my own personal blog and a couple of things. But then on the other side, we have something called static site generators. So what are these? In WordPress, you might have a layout that has you know sidebars and stuff like that. And then you have a main content area. Now what happens is when you hit the web page, the server is going to say, oh, you've hit this URL. It's going to combine all these different elements in real time and show you the final product. So it dynamically generates the page for you based upon a certain number of conditions. This could be page type, could be the category, or it could be a whole slew of different things. So there is some server processing that has to go on. Now juxtapose that with something like a static site generator where the files are actually just generated at build time, meaning before the site gets published to the server, a build process runs and generates a bunch of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. And all those files are packaged up and put on a server. And the server just serves those files. As soon as a URL is hit, that file has been served. So this is traditionally how web servers have worked since the beginning of time. There's very little processing power that happens. It basically gets a route, says, hey, go here, and a file is delivered to the browser. Browser will then download CSS and JS as normal. The end result is static sites are usually very, very, very fast. That's a humongous benefit that people have with those. And furthermore, you get some customization benefits. So you can customize things as you would like, as you'd see. However, it's not as easy to get up and running with them. So which one should you use for your SaaS-based application or even your application in general? That's a good question. Let's weigh a couple of options. Number one, let's talk about WordPress. If you're going to be running a blog or you're going to be running a site that's just kind of a marketing site, let's say you are helping your uncle or your friend and they have a brewery or a gym or a band and they need a website, something like WordPress is perfect simply because you can install it, set it up, find a good looking theme, change the photos, change the logos, add all the content that you would like for the pages and so forth, add some contact forms and you're done. It'll just work. It's basically optimized for SEO almost out of the box, you know, on a very simple level. And it's very easy to add new pages if they need to add a new page about a new recipe that came out at their brewery or a new beer that came out or a new workout that came out at the gym, they can easily do that right there in the WordPress admin. They don't need to involve you whatsoever. Now, this also works if you have something like a blog for yourself, like my blog at donfelker.com is a WordPress blog. I use it because I want to use my blog as a place where I can write and I don't have to worry about writing code. I want to be able to focus on writing, not focusing on the infrastructure of actual running the site. For me, installing WordPress works. Now, now, it also makes sense if you have a product in which you don't need a lot of customization, you're happy with a theme that you found out there, and you just want to get something out there quickly. You can then use WordPress to install that theme, make some changes, boom, now your product could be, you know, the marketing and sales page could be live, which kind of brings up another topic here. If you are running a SaaS based application, most likely you've built, written this in something like Ruby on Rails, JavaScript, Python, whatever. A lot of times these sites will be run on the same root domain. And so you're probably wondering, why would I install WordPress if I have my app built in one of these other platforms? What you'll find out once you ship an application, sometimes you need to be able to add specific landing pages. You need to be able to add different layouts for different sections of your site. You need to do all these things and doing so inside of your actual SaaS application can get a little cumbersome and it's kind of melding two different worlds. You have the actual application that provides value. And then you have over here is you have your sales and marketing. What I do is I actually separate them. 
is I'll have a the root domain is my sales and marketing page because that's where people are going. If they hear about my app and they hear about the domain, they'll go there and I want to be able to present them all the details that they need in a sales and marketing like fashion. And then when they click sign up or log in, it takes them to the actual app. Now that could be on a subdomain or a different domain that's related. And you can tie these things together through the analytics providers. We won't get into that. I'll use both. I'll use my actual application on a different URL and then I'll use a marketing page. Now I've used WordPress as the marketing site for dozens of different apps that I've built over the years and it's worked great. Why would I end up using a static site generator? So let's talk about those. Static site generators are fantastic simply because they're fast. They also give you the ability to make changes very specifically in different parts of the application. Maybe you want your footer to look a certain way on one part of the application and it look different on another part. Maybe you want to use one layout in this route, but a different layout in this route. Yes, these things are possible in WordPress, but you're going to have to kind of fight the system a little bit and it's going to be a little cumbersome, kind of confusing. Now with a static site generator, you might just say, hey, if I'm on this route, use this layout and here's the content. So those kind of things work. Furthermore, if you need to do some customization, maybe you need to write some custom JavaScript. Maybe you need to do some type of interaction that shows some data from your back end and you want to pull out through JavaScript. You can do that much easier in a static site generator than you could with WordPress. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. It's very possible with WordPress. You just need to know how to do it the WordPress way. Now, should you use a static site generator for your own personal stuff? Again, that's up to you. I have a friend of mine who uses a static site generator for his blog and it came out very well. That's what he likes and he uses that. For me, I don't like using that as my blog. I just want to focus on actually writing and then getting stuff out there. What would I use nowadays for a SaaS based application? Again, this depends. If I know that I only need a very generic landing page and it just needs to do some basic things, I'll probably use WordPress. However, if I know that I'm going to need some type of interaction, I want to change all different types of the app, fine grain detailed access to this div and I want to be able to change this over here and I want to kind of move these things around or I have a very specific landing page that I want to use. It's custom HTML. I'm going to start using a static site generator. So I have two applications right now that I am in the middle of launching. One's actually already soft launched and the other one is just about ready. One is Acropedia. This is a tool that allows you to find acronyms inside of your company, self-discovery. So you can go inside of Slack and type a slash command and it'll give you all the acronyms to help you identify all the weird acronyms you have when you join a company. You're like, I don't know what XYZ means or REI means or whatever. You can then self-discover them without having to ping a bunch of people on your team. It makes it really useful. The other one is Stoa and Stoa is a community platform for creators. So if you have a community, like I have a freelance community, if you're interested, you can then see the link in the notes below to join the freelance community. This platform allows creators to monetize and you know kind of have their own private platform. So think of like Facebook groups, but more private. You can monetize it and everything is just off of all of the social media platforms and it's all private just to your community. So what did I use for these two? I thought about WordPress, but what I ended up doing is going with a static site generator. Now, like I said, there's multiple ones out there. The main popular ones I have listed here are Hugo, Gatsby, Jekyll, and Next.js. Now, the decision that I made is because of three things. Number one, easier to modify. I have a very specific landing page that I want on the homepage. And then from there, I want the site to look different. So I want maybe on the homepage, there's no top bar, there's no footer or anything. There's, it's a very specific guided type of walkthrough. And then when you click certain things, then you're going to land into the site that has the header. Now, I may change that in the future, but now I have the header and all the regular menu kind of things like that. And then I might have a blog and that's going to look a little bit different. I wanted more control. And furthermore, I wanted to be able to edit the HTML as I see fit. Maybe I didn't want this thing to be the color blue of the theme that might be in WordPress. So I might want it purple. Inside of my static site generator, I can use whatever CSS framework I would like. And so here I'm going to be using Tailwind CSS with mine. I'm going to be using this with both Acropedia as well as Stoa. Now, which platform am I going to use for static site generation? Am I going to use one of those top four? Amazingly, no, I'm not even going to use one of the top four. Three of these are actually all JavaScript based. Hugo, Gatsby, and Next.js. The last one is Jekyll. That's Ruby based. Jekyll is very popular and it's got a lot of popularity because GitHub ended up using it. But what I ended up using is Middleman and that's at middlemanapp.com. And what it is, I created a template, which you can see here on my GitHub page. And this template integrates automatically with Tailwind CSS3 and uses the Tailwind CLI to generate the CSS that's needed. Now, the reason why I decided to go with Middleman is simply because it uses ERB as a templating language. Now, for me, I develop all my applications, all the current applications in Ruby on Rails. What I want is to make sure I don't have a lot of context switching. So that's the number two thing here on my list is I don't want to have a lot of context switching. Having a front end site static generator written in Ruby where I can use Ruby loops, I can use Ruby syntax, I can use that templating language in there to generate those files makes my life a lot easier because I don't have to switch back and forth between, oh, Ruby on Rails is using ERB, but over here we're using Haml or some Pug or whatever, some templating language 
language, I can use this same templating language and there's less context switching. It allows me to be much more productive. I can stay within one language and not have to switch all over the place. Now, of course, it's not the most popular one out there. However, there are a lot of sites that are out there written with middleman that are very popular. For example, MailChimp's site is built with middleman. If you go to MailChimp.com, you're looking at a middleman site. Banner Bear is another one. There's multiple other quite large sites out there that are built with middleman. The thing is with middleman, it's not super fancy. It just works. And that's the key here. It gets out of my way and I don't have to worry about it. The third thing here is it's just faster to load. Sometimes with WordPress, if you have a lot of plugins, depending upon your host, if it's shared hosting or whatever, WordPress sites can be a little slow to load. Static sites are a little bit faster to load. So for my instance, that's just kind of an added benefit, but the main ones really are, it's easier to modify the actual source because I can make it do exactly what I want. And I want a very specific thing for these applications. If I wanted something generic, I would install WordPress definitely. Of course, the context switching is a huge one for me. I want to be able to work in both environments and not have to worry about, oh, how do I do this over here? And how do I do this over here? And then kind of have to keep making those errors as I go back and forth. To wrap this up, which one should you use? It really depends on what you're gonna be doing. However, if it's something simple, I recommend you go with WordPress. It just works if you don't need to modify a lot of stuff. If you need a lot of modifications and customization and you're more technical, maybe look into a static site generator. It is going to be more work. You are gonna have to do a lot more legwork to set it up, but you're gonna have a lot more flexibility going down the road. Now, ultimately, you might need to get to market faster. So maybe shipping with WordPress and then changing over to a static site generator later is the way to go. You just have to check it out and see what works for you. I hope that helps. And uh, that's kind of the way that I'm doing things. I'll see you in the next one.